The thought of starting a garden can feel overwhelming. It seems like there's so much to learn, but gardening can be simple. And in today's video, I'm going to share eight simple steps to help you get started on your very first garden. But if we haven't met before, my name is Angela from Growing in the Garden, and I love to share garden inspiration and helpful tips so you can be successful in your own garden. The first step is to choose a location for your garden. There are three important considerations for when you're choosing the location for your garden. The best spot is where it is convenient for you, some place that you walk by and see often. If you don't see your garden regularly, you may forget about it. So choose a location that is convenient. The second most important consideration is the amount of sunlight that that area receives. Look for a spot that gets at least six to eight hours of sun a day. You can always add shade, especially in hot places like Arizona, but you can't add sun. And finally, you need to have access to water in that location. You can drag a hose to that location, that works just fine. Just make sure that you're going to have access to a steady supply of water in whatever location you choose. So the second step is to start small. As you're thinking about starting your garden, raised beds are a great option. They give you the opportunity to start with the best soil right away. Same thing with containers and grow bags. You fill them with the best type of soil and you are ready to begin gardening. So when you're thinking about adding those to your garden, it's important to have an overall plan in place for your garden. Have an idea of bed placement and where you're going to be locating things. That way you don't have to move things around. And then start small. Begin by adding one bed or one container at a time. Add more beds and containers later as your experience and ability grows. Here are a few key principles to think about when you are designing your raised bed garden. Aim for your raised beds to be no wider than four feet wide. If you're adding more than one raised bed, you wanna make sure that you have at least three feet between your beds so that you have room for the crops to grow and spill over and also for things like a wheelbarrow to get through. The ideal depth for your raised beds is between 12 to 18 inches deep. That provides enough soil for most plants' roots to grow really well. For a first raised bed, a four by four foot bed or a four by eight foot bed is a great start. You can grow a lot of vegetables in that small amount of space. Now that you know where your garden is gonna be located and what you're going to be growing in, it is time to fill those beds, containers, and grow bags up with soil. The major advantage to growing in containers and raised beds is that you get to start with the best soil right away. The soil is one of the most important parts of your garden. I love to fill my containers and raised beds up with a combination of compost, coconut coir, and vermiculite. That combination is the perfect mix for your raised beds and containers. It's light and airy. It gives the roots access to nutrients and plenty of moisture. How much soil will you need? This is determined by the volume of your raised beds or containers. So it's time to do a little bit of math, but it's not hard. A four by four foot bed that is one foot deep will require a total of 16 cubic feet of soil. So fill those beds all the way up and then each time you plant, you wanna add more compost to fill those beds all the way back up. The more you garden, the better your soil gets, especially as you follow organic gardening principles. The next step is to decide how you're going to water your garden. Consistent watering is one way to ensure that your plants are healthy. Healthy plants are more able to resist disease and pests and other stresses in the garden. So it's important to have some sort of automatic watering system. Drip lines are a very effective way to water your garden. It can be as simple as fixing that drip line connected to your hose with a battery operated timer. It's important to understand a couple of watering principles as you begin watering your garden. Number one, a dry seed is a dead seed. When you plant a seed, it's important to continue watering that seed until it germinates. The second principle to remember, it's important to water the entire root zone of plants. The roots will spread where the moisture is and the larger the root system, the larger the plant. Plus, keeping the whole bed moist keeps the soil, worms, and microbes alive. We're already on step five. 
So for step five, it's important to find a planting guide meant for your area and follow it. Plants have a preferred growing temperature that they grow best at. It's important to plant at the right time for your plants to be healthy. Contact your local extension office, ask around local gardeners. Planting at the right time means that crops will have enough time to grow and develop so you can harvest before it gets too hot or too cold. A big part of gardening success is determining the unique growing conditions in your area and learning how to adapt to those. Every area has benefits and challenges. Learn to maximize the benefits of whatever area you're growing in and understand the unique challenges of your climate. Work with those conditions so that you can have a successful garden. A trusted planting guide is a great way to ensure that you are planting at the right time so your crops can be successful. The next step is to plant your garden. Decide what you would like to grow and learn whether it grows best from seeds or seedlings. Order those seeds, buy those transplants, and then plant them in your garden at the correct time. Pick a few things that your family likes to eat. Learn about growing those vegetables. Find out whether they do best from seed or seedling. Plant them at the right time in your area. Learn the best times to harvest. Learn how often they need to be watered and fertilized. Check your new seeds and your seedlings often. Water as necessary. If newly planted seeds and seedlings dry out, they'll die. I think a great way to begin is to choose one vegetable, one herb, and one flower. Learn all you can about those particular things and then add them to your garden. As you have success with that vegetable, herb, and flower, you will be excited and inspired to add more things to your garden. The next step is one of my favorites spending time in your garden every day. When you're in your garden every day, you are going to catch problems when they're small. When you catch problems like pests or watering issues or diseases when they're small, it's much easier to manage them. If problems get larger, they get harder to treat and you might lose that plant. Spending time in your garden helps ensure that your plants are healthy and healthy plants are less susceptible to pests and diseases. And finally, the last step is to harvest and eat what you grow. Learn the best times to harvest and harvest and eat and enjoy the vegetables from your garden. Most vegetables are best when they're picked young and picked often. Picking vegetables young and often encourages more vegetables to grow. Use the food you grow in your garden. Try new recipes. Incorporate your harvest into food your family already eats and enjoys. Knowing that you've grown your own food is a wonderful feeling and learning how to grow your own food is simple. Follow these simple steps and before long you'll be harvesting vegetables from your own garden. Thank you so much for watching.